During last night, I was asked to show a photo of the Northern Lights in my talk, so I did. This is a photo taken from the doorsteps of my house last January. My ancestors believed the lights were reflection from the shields of the Valkyrias, guiding fallen warriors to Valhalla. Some thought they were Bivrost, the glowing magical rainbow bridge that connected Earth to Ausgard, the home of the gods. Science has since taught us that this is probably not the case. But by the way, my house is on sale, uh, so Dr. Sistrom, <laughs> something to consider moving to Europe? <laughs> well, about myself, I'm an internist, hematologist, and a medical oncologist. I used to be a busy oncologist, but I got interested in ME as I, it was brought to my attention that there was a disease with more burden than cancer, and also as so many others in the field, I have a family member with me. So this is what I'm going to discuss. Acquired disease. Uh, just more than 75 years ago, an epidemic started in the northern part of Iceland. At first, it was thought to be a polio, but in many aspects, it was different. It particularly affected young people. It was most likely a virus but the culprits has yet not been found. The first cases were diagnosed in the northern town of Akureyri. There was a second wave six years later marked in blue. Vaccination for polio began in 1955, and it seems it was protective against Akureyri disease, so it may be it was some kind of an enterovirus. The epidemic was well described, and quite many publications were made with a long follow-up. The disease was for some time called Aguri disease or Iceland disease. Some patients did recover, but 20% were sick their entire life. Then there was an editorial in Lancet in 1956 stating that the name of the illness was not at all appropriate, and the editor suggested that the name should be benign myalgic encephalomyelitis. Dr. Björn Sigurdsson, uh, he was a leading Icelandic scientist, had a concern, and wrote a letter to the editor saying that in his view, the puzzling disease could hardly be adequately named until etiological and anatomical studies have better identified its nature. It is sad that those words still apply today, 70 years later. Well, um, Iceland has a tiny population of only around 400,000 people. We have a universal healthcare system that is funded mostly through taxes. There are some private clinics, but they are also mainly funded by the government. Um, we have been trying to raise awareness of ME and long COVID in Iceland, and the ME Society has been very uh, good in that. Here they have uh, this think in a million missing in 2018, where they placed shoe pairs, uh, as many shoe pairs as were infected by the accurate disease in the town of Akure in 1948. Um, then, yeah. We have had to repeatedly had a, a symposium at the Icelandic medical conferences with leading scientists from abroad, both regarding ME and long COVID. Uh, we have written articles in the local newspapers. Here the title is, What really is the ME disease? Uh, we made, like the Austrians, a documentary a couple of years ago that, in my view, really has increased awareness of ME in Iceland. And we did, had a symposium at the, at the Accurate Disease 75th anniversary. Two of the elderly gentlemen in the front were affected by Accurate Disease. And two more documentaries regarding long COVID are also close to ready. And yes, Carmen, we will have German subtitles. <laughs> to the topic. Uh, the Accurate Clinic is for patients with ME and long COVID. It serves patients nationwide. It also has a coordination role for services for ME patients. 
most interviews are made by telemedicine. The clinic was established formally last August, and here you see in the middle the Minister of Health. The clinic could not have been established without a very important international collaboration and support. Some of our friends are here giving talks today. Thank you a lot. This is the team. Um, it's a multidisciplinary team, but unfortunately most are still part-time in this project. So what we have done so far, uh, we've seen around 400 patients. Um, but it was surprising to me to see how many patients are really, really sick. And I'll give you an example. We had a young gentleman with multiple myeloma that required intensive therapy with autologous stem cell transplantation. He pulled through the therapy and got back to work. Then he got COVID and developed long-term consequences. I asked him, if you could choose between those two diseases, which would you prefer, long COVID or multiple myeloma? You could probably all guess what the answer was. Um, we are about ready to send questionnaires electronically to the whole group. Uh, the first we are going to use is the FUNCA 55 that Dr. Sommerfeld made. We are supposed to coordinate a national registry, but we have not had time nor funds there yet. The same with, scientific, the same with the scientific part, there is a lot of work to do there. We have a homepage, but as you know, and I have been discussed here earlier this morning, ME and long COVID is not just a healthcare issue. It has a huge impact on the social well-being of the patient as well as the society itself. The healthcare service and the social service is lacking far behind the services that cancer patients receive in Iceland today. I think that's unfair. So what can I say so far? Well, awareness of uh, ME and long COVID seems to have improved among the public and the healthcare professionals in Iceland. We have started a designated clinic service, and we do have a support from the ministries of health and the social uh, affairs and the medical director of health. Um, but we do not have enough staff. Funding was underestimated. Uh, we still have inadequate, inadequate follow-up of the patients. Um, Nordforsk is an organization under the Nordic Council of Ministers of Finland, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, and Iceland. They stress here in this policy paper the importance of Nordic collaboration. We have to unite to fight on a much broader scale. And my last slide, uh, my, this is my last slide. May I take the opportunity to draw your attention to this virtual conference in October? Thank you. Thank you. First, I would like to say to all those who are online live streaming, we know there's a problem with the screen. It's not helpful if you tell us anymore. We are working on it. If it becomes good, then tell us. Okay. <laughs> so questions from the audience to Fridbjörn? Raise your hand. Yeah. You know, thank you. Thank you for the northern lights. <laughs> um, uh, I, was, I was just wondering when you said about funding and... Uh, since you've met uh, you know, the Ministry of Health and Social Affairs, that's right. Um, if actually it helps uh, to get more funding, if you provide epidemiological data, like incidents and prevalence, is it something that the politicians will be convinced, or is just uh, enough to give like a, a rough costs of uh, the social impact of the disease? Yeah, I believe so. I the question is, uh, do we have, uh, is the question, uh, do we have support from the um, uh, uh, director, directors of health? And I believe so. Uh, they, most people believe that the ME is a real disease. Uh, I think uh, accurate disease has helped us. Uh, previously, 
Acute disease was thought to be a functional disease, and the patients were ignored. And so the few patients that are still alive that I have talked to, uh, they have described total ignorance. I have a question myself. We're talking about now what the politicians can do or the government can do about this problem we have with underfunding. Now, if they funded, let's say, a large amount of money, how do we know that they will steer it towards a biological research and not a functional disorder research? They do not have the powers to steer it in any way. How do you comment on that, Tribune? Well, my background is medical oncology. I think we should use the same model for ME long COVID as we use for cancer. We have a very active cancer societies. We have really good structure. We have really good guidelines. We have excellent services for patients and families. I think we should learn from oncology. Yeah, just learn because they are so sick that whatever, you should fund it up. Yes, and you should, of course, focus on those that are most severe very early on, even though they cannot show up at the clinic. Other questions? Okay, then we are moving on. Thank you so much.